Um, but you still keep on working on the metaverse worlds, right? Keep on working on, on which? Metaverse worlds, uh, like Second Life, OpenSea. You know? Yes, oh, but, okay. ma but mainly um, we're using Blue Mars, which is based on the Cry Engine. Uh, we're using something called Unity 3D, and most of our development really is in those two areas. So Unity 3D, nice thing about Unity is that it runs directly in the web browser. Yeah, it's easier to use. It's harder to create things, but it's easier to use. So, uh, but for the types of things we do, we're usually building it ourselves, and then other people use it. So for us, it's fine. I think if the students want to do do uh, building, then um, Second Life's better. But if because it's easier. But if uh, you know, but for our group, we don't do that necessarily. So for for us, Unity is is, is a little better these days. So. But anyway, Second Life was pretty fun and of course and at that time when we got into it a lot of educators were exploring the potential for virtual worlds in education as you know so um, and I still think it's the, the place to be uh, with that the community is better here it's more developed it's more focused uh, within Second Life the other environments uh, you know are, are a little spread out so there's yes there's some educators in Unity but not as many now and I think that's changing and growing Second Life is still has a, has a good education community. If you were going to tell, for example, one experience that you remember the most, which one will be? I would say our first major project where we developed a, a cinematography course where you could actually learn the language of cinema in Second Life using equipment that actually worked. And we also created a piece of software that linked, or about five pieces of software that linked uh, Second Life to Blackboard, the course management system. And when we did that project, it was really exciting because uh, most of the people we worked with were local with us here on our team, but for certain things we worked with people from around the world. And when we had meetings, it was people would show up in Second Life and work and in voice. It was uh, our first major project in Second Life. And I found it very exciting. And, you know, we'd have to schedule uh, meetings at all hours of the day because some people, when we had one guy in Australia, somebody was in Japan, Europe, here, that kind of, you know, across the States. Um, it was, so it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, the, the collaborative uh, aspect of building the environment and a lot of really good energy with students involved and that was really exciting. When the person creates, when the students start to create the Abby, the avatar to modify the shape and the and the hair, the color, the eyes, do you think that people like they looked at themselves in real life or do you think they, they try to change it that is completely different as it is in real life? Um, I think both. You know, you see people that try to make the avatar look like themselves, but maybe a slightly more idealized version of themselves, let's say. <laughs> Take off a pound here or there, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then, of course, you see also people that uh, want to be something completely different, you know, maybe non-human or more of a fantasy avatar, that kind of thing. And that is very acceptable here for the students here in, in Second Life, right? Yeah, the only thing, one of these signs that uh, we're looking at, I don't know which one right now, we'd have to click on it, it's our code of conduct, and so what we do is we say that this is a university space, and anybody that visits here, we ask to um, abide by the same code of ethics that any student would while they're on campus. So this is essentially a campus space, and those uh, standards are to be upheld here too. So we, we, we just, in fact, we had the university lawyers look at it, and it was, it's actually just pulled from the student handbook, essentially, but it's, I think it's modified just a little bit. But that way people are to behave with civility and respect toward each other in the same way they are expected to do that on the real campus. Well, the Blackboard project is on this island. Let's see, we can, if we, um, this was a project we, uh, we, get, we got a grant from Blackboard to do this, to link uh, faculty that, and students that want to work with Second Life to link it back to the Blackboard course management project. So. Or software. So what this is, it's a series of five different pieces of software that allow faculty member and students to do just that. So um, the main piece, and this is, by the way, this is all free and open source and anybody can use this. It does take some time to set it up, so it has to be set up by a specialist within the university who does the Blackboard server kind of thing. So 
Um, but the software we developed is free, and it was called the Green, Greenhouse Grant for Virtual Worlds. And so we developed this. We thought this would be very helpful to uh, faculty who wanted to hold courses in second month. And you can click on any of these. And the first piece is registration. So when you uh, set up a course in Second Life, uh, it, it has an association between the real life student name and the avatar name. And it does this on the Blackboard side. So this is really the first piece. And so once this association is made between the two uh, names, the avatar name and the real life name, then you can do these other things. So for instance, uh, this next piece of software is, uh, and there's websites and things like that. If you click on this, you can find all the links here. You know, the, the little boxes give you different uh, links and information. Um, but the second piece gives you the class list. So once people enroll in Blackboard uh, for the course, they automatically show up on the Second Life uh, class list too. So it's, uh, you can see them from either side, either through Blackboard or Second Life. In fact, actually it's even deeper than that because once somebody enrolls in the course from the um, university registration, then they're automatically entered into the Blackboard system. And they're automatically entered into the Second Life course. And we did this because, obviously, with Second Life, uh, students can learn asynchronously, right? So on their own time. And we wanted to create a system where faculty who didn't have to uh, manage all this, uh, like a normal 16-week semester-long class, so that students can come and go. So maybe you did the learning extremely quickly, uh, or maybe it took you a very long time to do it. So in any case, we didn't we wanted to create a system that wouldn't hold you up as a, as a learner, um, and also that wouldn't burden the faculty member with uh, approving maybe somebody to go on to the next level. And so we created a system that would just automate all uh -huh. and people could learn at their own pace. So you try to integrate all the tools that you have in like from the web 2.0, Blackboard, I see also Moodle here, uh, where everything is connected to each other. All the tools are connected. Well, yeah, we wanted to we wanted to take this work and work with the Moodle people, um, but that never happened. Now, now that could happen because honestly, most of the uh, software is written on the Second Life side. Yes. So there, there is a potential that this could be ported over to Moodle, but right now it, it just works with Blackboard. So the next piece, online status. This will this will tell you uh, what students are online automatically. So you can just see who's online, if the teacher is online, if the other students are online. It just tells you very simply who is available um, from the course. Because again, most of the experiences we were designing were collaborative uh, learning. So you're learning as a team. This one's kind of interesting. This is chat logging. So when you click, we can get a connection between, uh, nine maybe. It seems things were moving very quickly. And I think they're looking more at social software, Facebook, Twitter, things like that. I, it seems like their interest in virtual worlds has kind of died down a little bit in general, but for us, we still see that as, as the real potential, the real future. Yeah, I also agree with you. I think people are looking for more simple tools to work with. The complexity of Second Life, that is actually another world. Okay, it's a big challenge for everybody. And the tool is so, so developed by itself that maybe you could never even end up knowing it all because each person can pull something from the knowledge into this world. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, well, I think it's, as you know, it's not for everybody, I mean, it is a lot to learn. Um, so Second Life, even even though it is somewhat simple, it's still it's still challenging, you know, uh, for faculty and, and some students, I think. So it's still, it's still a lot to, to learn, and you really have to be committed to it. Just to finish, if you would like to do a recommendation for other teachers or students that would like to get into this world to start working and studying, what would be the, your recommendation or your advice? Hmm. Well, I think the people that I've seen that really have embraced virtual worlds and really understood their potential have been very excited to also learn the technology, which is, a, like we were just talking about, is a big commitment because it is quite different than anything else. It's not PowerPoint, it's not Microsoft Word or something. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot to learn. So I think the people that have been most successful about it become like an, an ambassador for it and they, they, they really do share that excitement. Um, so it's not for everybody. 
I would say. Um, you know, I find that on each campus, if we would work with a, a different group or different university, there's usually a couple people, let's say like, you know, yourself and Ruben, and, you know, there's a couple people that see the vision and those those people can help others get there. I think that's probably the best way to do it is, is, is to have a core group of people that can do maybe some of the harder work and make it a little easier for others to, to, to move into it. Okay, so thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I really appreciate it and 